guys, it is safe to say that we have some sort of a creature, some sort of an animal here on the property that is trying to eat my animals. Our only option now is we're gonna set some traps around the property. Oh my God, guys, guys. What is up everyone and welcome back to another episode guys. I just want to say thank you so much We just broke 115,000 subscribers. So thank you guys for all the support you've been showing me I am working on merch I'm I've been trying to get in contact with a shirt guy that's gonna be doing all the graphic work It's been a little bit of a mission, but we're gonna get that done as soon as possible for you guys But anyways, we have a little bit of a problem here at the house today You know, we've been having some problems over the past year with animals getting killed cages getting broken into and I'm finally connecting the dots and I'm realizing that we have a creature that I think is lurking in the neighborhood, but most importantly around the house because we have all these animals here. We're constantly feeding out this food and it attracts other animals. So if you guys watch my iguana video where I rescued the iguana from the cat, you'll remember this cage right here. We actually patched this cage up right here. You remember it had a big tear in it. I originally thought this tear was from the weed eater because we had been using the weed eater and I thought, well, maybe it got nicked but then we hadn't been using the weed eater in about two months and this guy's cage got torn open. I wanna show you guys right here. Look at this tear. There's two holes. There's one here, or actually three. There's one large gash, one hole here and one hole here. Something is trying to get my animals. They've been trying to claw at it and if you guys look at these two clips right here, these little pictures, about a year ago I had turtles that were living in a pond over there. I'm gonna go show you that pond in a minute. Those little turtles actually got killed. I came out one morning to feed them, and I was like, oh my gosh, these, these turtles are not in the pond. And these turtles I found dead. You could see something got in the water, took these turtles out, bit their heads off, and it really is just terrible. So now I am connecting the dots that something must be in the yard, in the area, that is trying to eat my animals. It was trying to get the orange banana pectinatus. It is trying to get the panda dragon now. Look at that, I mean. We're gonna have to move this guy right now to the other cage. We're gonna get him completely set up in a little, come here. We're just gonna put him in this cage for now and on the patio, oh, his nails are really sharp, oh. Okay, here you go, buddy. Guys, we got Ghost in his new cage right now. We're just gonna leave him right here. We're gonna transfer his wood in water dish later, but what we need to do right now, what is of the utmost importance, is we need to go around the entire property and check out every animal enclosure and make sure this creature that's lurking around is not trying to get in and kill anything else. So I doubt anything got to these animals right over here because these are very solid cages with some very heavy wire. So I doubt any animal, even if it was a raccoon or a fox, could get in. So, you know, these guys are looking good. You can see these are secure doors. Nothing is getting in here. These guys are nice and secure. The Cuban iguana is nice and secure. I'm not seeing any signs of anything clawing, trying to get in, wire broken. So these guys are good to go. But let's go over to the shed right now. We're going to try to take a look under and see what we can find. Shed is what I consider ground zero for this problem. Over the years that I've lived here, I found various animals. I mean, I found gray racers, ring neck snakes. Cliff, don't you remember I found a ring neck snake? I brought it in like two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we found that ring neck snake. Literally, he was going under the shed. And my neighbor's cat loves to live under there. So this is ground zero for this problem yep look at that <laughs> not even one minute from walking over here and I already see that there's some dirt some kicked up weeds for something going under this shed now let me take a look yeah it is absolutely pitch black under there I can't see a thing but there has to be something under here I mean whatever's been doing this whatever did this last night has to be under the shed right now or at least was under there sometime today and this is the little pond that I was telling you about that my turtles got eaten in about a year ago. I used to keep it uncovered. Right now the water's a little bit full. I gotta drain it from the rain. So we're gonna go check out the rhino iguanas and the redfoots now. I wanna make sure they're okay because tortoises are especially susceptible to being attacked. They may have this nice hard shell, but when they tuck in their shell, their little arms are exposed to being eaten at by animals. I mean, I've seen them with rats gnawing at their legs, so let's go check them out. So my mom actually just came out. I see that we got three healthy redfoot tortoises. So at least I know three of my seven are good to go. They're not hurt. My mom just threw them a tomato and some sort of a lettuce. But let's check out the rest. They love to hide in this little area. So we got three, four, five. Where's the rest? Six and seven. But look at this, guys. Look at that. Right off the bat, we notice that there's some scratch marks. I mean... Look at that, going right to where they all sleep at night. If you look at the rest of the wood, there's no scratch marks on the rest. 
And look how fresh that is. I mean, this has to be from, from last night, I would think. Look at those scratch marks and look. Look, the scratch marks actually go on the inside too. So whatever it was, must have hopped in here and was trying to get out, trying to claw its way up. Guys, it is safe to say that we have some sort of a creature some sort of an animal here on the property that is trying to eat my animals. We saw that these red foot tortoises had claw marks going in and out of their enclosure. We saw the tracks coming from under the shed. So our only option now is we're gonna set some traps around the property because whatever this animal is, he's gonna come back. So we've got our bait for our trap right now. We have a little dish of dog food, which will attract all kinds of animals. And we have an egg just because there could be some sort of an animal lurking around. I know a lot of the neighbors have animals parrots, other lizards. So this may attract any sort of a monitor lizard. And this dog food right here is gonna attract any sort of a possum or a raccoon. So these are our traps right here. So I'm gonna be setting the very first trap up right here. So this trap is a little bit tricky to set. It's not too terribly bad, but you basically what you do is you just push this down, pull it up. I'm gonna be putting the dog food here just in case it's a raccoon or possum in here. What do we have to do? All we have to do is set this right here. All right, guys, we got this trap set up and ready to go. So this trap is kind of a rig. It's kind of a little bit messed up. But anyways, look, we have this mouse trap on the outside. We have a wire that goes to here. And it, we don't need to get into that. All you guys need to know is that when anything walks in and touches that, it's going to close. So let me show you guys right now. Anything goes in to get that food, the trap is going to close. So we have our food set up for whatever may be living under here, if it's still there. So we're now going to reset this trap and then we're gonna go set the other one. So we have our second and last trap that we're going to be setting up. So this trap, same concept, anything goes in there and touches it, I'm just gonna place the egg right in there. Then we're just gonna leave this trap right here, right next to the claw mark. But anyways, guys, it is about to turn dark. It is the late afternoon. These predators are not gonna be coming out till the night. So we're just gonna go eat, we're starving. Cliff, are you hungry? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're absolutely starving. So we're just gonna leave these traps and we're gonna come back early in the morning and see what we caught. All right guys, it is the morning now and I'm trying not to look at this trap in my peripheral vision. I want it to be just as much of a surprise if we caught anything for me as it is for you guys. So let's take a look at this trap. All right, so that trap has been set off and there's actually a cane toad in it. So this is an invasive species. You could see, oh wow, I didn't even notice. If we got anything big, it could have gotten out. Wow, that's not good. Let's try to get this guy out. I didn't even realize how this trap is. It's not very good. Actually, he's right here at the front. Let's get him out. Oh, got him. Oh no, his leg got caught. So this guy looks like he's injured. Take a look at him right now. We have an invasive cane toad. You see that white there? That's actually his neurotoxins. So he'll use those toxins for dogs. These toads are a big problem for animals here in South Florida. A lot of dogs, you see it on the news all the time that these toads are killing dogs. Dogs are half dead because they're eating this toad and this white toxin is getting on them. And it looks like he got cut. Oh yeah, he got cut open on the cage. But look at him, beautiful toad, but unfortunately it is another invasive species here in South Florida. So unfortunately he does have to be humanely euthanized. I don't wanna let him go here. It could endanger my dogs and he could also endanger dogs in the neighborhood. So he has to be euthanized by state law. Guys, we just got done dealing with that invasive toad over there. We did have to euthanize him. It sucks. But anyways, let's go check this trap out over here. I'm hoping we got something because the toad definitely wasn't the menace. Oh my God, guys, guys. No, I can't put guys. We have a black and white tegu. Oh, is. I wonder if he's an escape pet. Oh, no, this guy is wild and mean. Holy crap, guys. Look at him. Look at him. Oh my gosh, guys. These uh, is another invasive species here. And this guy had to have been an escape pet because I don't have black and whites. I only have a blue tegu and this is insane. Guys, I can't believe this has to be the guy that killed my turtles, that killed the duck, and was trying to get into the red foot tortoise enclosure and the one that was clawing at the cages. I mean, it only makes sense. Come here, look at his feet. I'm actually gonna try to get him out. Look at him, his nose is, he's been busting his nose on the screen. Look at him, look at him. Look at his tongue. Oh, he just licked me, he just licked me. Okay, all right, um, I'm trying to think of the best method to get him. I think it would have to be like this. You know, I'm not entirely sure I don't want to get bit. Guys, I'm thinking the best way to get him out is I'm gonna go get a bin right now. So just wait right there. I'm gonna go get this bin. All right, guys, we got the bin. 
right here, we're gonna be pouring the tegu into the bin. And this bin is kind of dirty from animals. All right, let's, uh, wait, how do I open this? There we go. All right, we just got him in here. Oh my gosh, wait, his tail, his tail. Okay, guys, we got him in the bin. Look at him. Look at him. I'm gonna grab him. Wait. Ah. Ah. Guys, it's a wild tegu. This guy is trying to bite me. Look at him. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that this thing was under the shed, living in the neighborhood. This is insane, look. This has to be what was clawing at the cages, look. Come here, look at his claws right here. Look at his back legs, look at him. But just look at the beauty of him. Look, he's got these blacks, the yellows. And this is a male tegu, you can see he's got these big fat jowls right here. The males have these little balls. I mean, guys, I had, I would have never thought in a million years that this is what was terrorizing, you know, my house. I mean, and look at him, he's got a regenerated tail. So you see how his tail has this nice black pattern and then boom, it goes solid black. When he was younger, maybe from a fight, I really don't know, you know, his tail must have gotten broken off, but just look at him. This is insane, guys. So I really don't wanna have a tegu. I'm trying to get out of the tegu. So I have a perfect buddy of mine, his name is John. He's actually a professional tegu trapper. Yes, we have professional trappers at their full-time job is to trap these tegus so i'm gonna give it to him he'll probably sell him or give him away or even keep him i really don't know but yeah guys this is crazy absolutely insane so guys that is going to end another episode here today i hope all of you guys enjoyed watching from me and my new tegu friend slash really not my friend because he's eaten some of my animals but guys if you enjoyed this video and you have not already please go comment down below what you thought give this video a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed you want to see crazy stuff like this Go subscribe, first link down below, but just take a look at his belly. He's got these beautiful patterns. I mean, absolutely insane, guys. This was epic.